Hello, Akakosh, Pastor Keith, and it's morning prayer for Monday, March 4th, and I'm coming to you from the environs of Christ Lutheran Church in Mililani Town, Island of Oahu, State of Hawaii, and it's good to have you with us. For the next, um, well, for the rest of this week and for most of, probably most of next week, we're going to go over the Ten Commandments, and I think we'll do one a day. Uh, Martin Luther had a way of saying, let's pray the commandments. And I thought, well, since the reading for last Sunday, yesterday, was um, the first reading was Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments from that uh, passage. Uh, there's, there's several different recitations of it, but that's the big one. And um, Luther said, let's pray them. And he had a four-part way of, of going through it. And we'll kind of follow that, but not explicitly. But nevertheless... First instruction, pondering what God intends us to do in that commandment. Then thanksgiving, praising God for God's goodness revealed through that commandment. And confession, acknowledging our sin that we do not keep the commandments perfectly. And prayer, asking God to help us obey the divine will. And uh, those are uh, kind of the... Uh, the four parts, uh, instruction uh, and thanksgiving and confession and uh, asking for help. So uh, the Ten Commandments in uh, Jewish faith were called the Torah, the way of life. And they were for all the people, which is unusual in the ancient world because it was most of the commands from the gods were to the nobility uh, who then passed it on. But this God of Israel was very egalitarian. Men, women, and children were all addressed as equals. Women were equals in the ancient Israelite uh, confederation. So uh, this was a different approach. And they were commands, not law, but they came after God rescued Israel from Egypt. And in Thanksgiving, God says, here's how we covenant. Here's how we live together. And the first three commandments in the Lutheran and Roman Catholic list are about our relationship with God. The uh, Episcopalians, Orthodox, and uh, uh, Reformed uh, Protestants pretty much uh, have four in relationship to God. They have an extra one there, and they kind of uh, condense the one about coveting. So that's, that's a good thing in the, in, in the way they do that, but uh, I still like the way we are more concise about the first three um, uh, commandments with uh, the Lutheran and Catholic. There's a funny thing I saw. There was a fundamentalist preacher on a website who said, you see, they have a different list. That they're just idolatrous. And I'm like, oh, give, give me a break. So uh, the first commandment is, you shall have no other gods. I am the Lord, your God, and I'm a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. Now, that sounds kind of like a law. If you don't keep my commandments, you're going you're all going to suffer. You're all going to go to hell. Um, and it, it, it sounds that way sometimes, but really, you put this in the sense of gospel that God raised Jesus from the dead, God raises us from the dead, and in response to God's love for us, we love and say, your wish, my love, O God, is my command. You shall have no other gods. What does this mean, says Luther? We are to fear, love, and trust God above all things. And the recommendation is we read a bit of the story of the golden calf, the people were waiting for Moses on the mountain, and he just didn't come down. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, this is Exodus 32, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come make gods for us, who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters. And bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, 
These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to this Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being, and the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. See, they're not even sure at this point who rescued them from Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power, with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them, in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fear, fierce wrath. Change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them to be by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have promised, I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And you know what? It says, the Lord changed his mind about the disaster he had planned to bring on his people. You can argue with God all you want. You really can. It's okay. Then Moses turned and went down the mountain, carrying the two tablets of the covenant in his hands, tablets that were written on both sides, written on the front and on the back. The tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God engraved upon the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, There's a noise of war in the camp. But Moses said, It is not the sound made by victors or the sound made by losers. It is the sound of revelers that I hear. As soon as he came near the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, Moses' anger burned hot and he threw the tablets from his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. He took the calf they had made, burned it with fire, ground it to power, powder, scattered it on the water, and made the Israelites drink it. He then scolded them a lot, and on the next day, Moses said to the people, You have sinned a great sin, but now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. So Moses returned to the Lord and said, Alas, this people has sinned a great sin, for they have made for themselves gods of gold. But now, if you only forgive their sin, but if not, blot me out of the book that you have written. You know, and there was Moses the next morning when they came out after having drunk the gold powder. And he's, I can imagine him looking at him and saying, go ahead, pee that God out. Yeah, what a golden calf that is all over the toilet. Right. Great. Wonderful. That's your God. All right. Thanks. I'm going to move this around because I think the prayer I want to pray is actually, yeah, it's on, on the computer. So, again, you shall have no gods before me. What does that mean? It means we are to fear, love, and trust God above all else. And that fear, love, and trust means really to hold God in awe. Hold God in awe. Not be afraid, but be in awe of the great God who loves little old you, a little old me, a little old earth. Yeah. So, we are to be atheists. Have no gods. Not just unsavory things, but even the good things. Gold, calves, deal, mm. family, church, the Bible, doctrine. None of that is God. God is God. And we are to fear, love, and trust God above all gods. Yeah, we're atheists 
and believers at the same time. E pule, kako. Let us pray. Dearest Lord, help us to fear and love you with all our heart, to glorify you and call on you with all our heart, to receive and follow your word with all our heart, to always seek the good of our neighbors, to hold on to the true faith and keep a clear conscience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Yeah, and we'll do the second commandment tomorrow and the third on Wednesday and so on and so forth. Okay, so um, you can uh, even pull your small catechism out if you have one and follow along. And now, may the God who is above all gods, the God who exists where none others do, bless you, guide you, and protect you this day and throughout the week. Amen.